Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Um, this is going to be a two-week show, so you'll be seeing this episode next Friday as well, and if you're seeing this next Friday, this is a repeat from last Friday. So I'm going to be talking about more of this is a highlight show of all the videos that the kids have made this last uh, summer camp season as well, so it's going to be a lot of video-heavy type stuff as well. I have pre-critics, so I'm going to be talking about the movies that are going to be coming out the rest of July, so we got that look to look forward to. I also have uh, uh, programs that are going to be airing on our MCAT channel for the next two weeks, so you guys get a chance to have a full look at some of the original MCAT programming. But first, I do want to get into a little more social media type stuff, so if you are interested in finding out more about me and my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. Uh, it is a wonderful website where you can get all sorts of resources from past videos and more and interviews and things I have done here on my Friday weekly show. Um, if you're interested in seeing more about the other channels that I help promote, uh, Dude I Just Drew, uh, we just did a Dude I Just Drew Junior episode and I'm going to be showing you guys the highlights a little bit later as well. And as part of MCAT, this is our last summer camp that we're going to be hosting it here in our facility um, because we're going to be going into our future new home. So if you go to our website at MCAT.org, you get a link to this uh, from this picture and it shows you to the current process of the new library that's getting built and if we take a look click on it and you get to see what it looks like right now so uh, of course if you don't want to go there and walk and see what it looks like right now you can see that they're making some major progress so if you see this particular area right here uh, on the uh, opposite side of the building right over there that's where we're going to be in the new facility so we're going to be uh, have open windows Basically, you kind of see this curtain behind me. There's going to be curtains to block out the natural light that we have coming in, or we're going to have studios that have the ability to look outside as well. So we're going to have some new light setups and new, some new cool things happening. And if you're interested in seeing the overall progress, you'll be able to see it at MCAT.org. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, it's... You know, I, I've been looking up some things about the weather. You know, the weather has been kind of uh, interesting, particularly in this past summer days. Uh, we can double check the fire danger today because usually around this time, you know, we, we usually fairly have high fire danger. Um, and particularly today, I think they went up to uh, the yellow range, which is uh, relatively low for uh, th this time of year. And it has rained this week, and it might even rain next week. Who knows? It's been v v uh, very interesting in terms of just like weather conditions. A couple days where they say it's going to be 90, it hasn't necessarily really even touched the 90 degree temperatures. It's been hot, but hasn't been brutal. So this has been one of our more mild summers we've had in a long time. But not only that, it's been one of our wetter ones. Um, I've only now been having some seasonal allergies because uh, I usually that's usually like the prelude to the end of spring and the beginning of summer. Summer basically started on June 21st, but it kind of seems like summer just started just this week uh, in my uh um, for my <laughs> uh, allergy uh, position. <coughs> All right, so that's kind of what's happening. The fire danger is at the uh, mid-high range. It's at high, so it's considered yellow. Uh, there is a fire danger. Burning season ended, uh, of course, since July 4th. So if you guys are planning on going out and burning things, uh, the fire department will not allow that or permit that happening until probably late September, early October. So you might want to check that out as the fire danger does will increase because August has t has a tendency to be one of the warmest, hottest months of the year. But so far this year, it's been pretty nice. So now is a good chance to get out and about. Uh, next week, I want to say that the weather uh, weather permitted, we'll be trying to be out and about doing some zombie uh, movie making stuff. So next week is our zombie camp, and I hope to show you a little bit of our zombie camp as well from last year. Um, but first and foremost, I do want to talk about our uh, animation camp. So this is the only timestamp in this uh, video that I'm going to be talking about, and that's the animation camp. So animation camp is today, live, uh, July 19th. Uh, we're going to have a live show at 5 p.m. Uh, we also have a live show for our zombie camp, final premiere of our big movie. It's looking good if, you, if you're watching this on Friday. Um, but... Without further ado, here is a short animation film that I made that will help you guy hopefully get you guys um, amped for our live show with all those kids that will be premiering a lot of their videos tonight at 5 p.m. Oh, hey, Bill. Hey, how's it going? Well, let's go for that walk. Hold on a second. Look both ways. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know to look both ways. Hey, what happened? Hey, you! Have you seen my friend? Yeah, it's always nice to look both ways because you never know when a guy on a horse is going to um, uh, lance you. So anyways, uh, that's one example of uh, some of the summer camps that we're, we've been doing these last two weeks. We have two animation camps. Uh, because of popular demand and so many kids wanted to do animation, we uh, added in a second animation kids for some of the kids who want to... Uh, who w w weren't able to do it in the first camp, so we added the second one. Uh, this year is our also our second year of doing our Time Travelers camp. So uh, here is a nice little taste of Time Travelers camp. It's from uh, an uh, exhibit that's happening at the uh, Historic Museum at Fort Missoula, and it is on a Vietnam first account um, veteran. So without further ado, here's this, and then when I come back, I'm going to be talking about a bunch of movies that are coming out this uh, weekend and next. My name is Everett Walker. I am the AmeriCorps leader serving here at Fort Missoula, uh, and I am an education docent here at the fort. So can you tell me what's going on in that picture behind you? Yes, I can. So this picture was taken shortly after uh, an exchange of gunfire on an amphibious track vehicle and a river on a search and destroy mission. The man front and center in the photo is Leon P. Howard III. The man sitting behind him is unnamed, but he's another Marine that was on this photo, uh, in this photo and serving on the same vessel as Leon uh, on this search and destroy mission. Now, this convoy of vehicles was about 13 strong uh, and was proceeding uh, through South Vietnam to a target further up this river. And at first they came into contact with Viet Cong forces on a beachhead before uh, embarking onto the river or into the river. Uh, the Viet Cong had dug themselves into a root field uh, on this beachhead. They looked sort of like mangrove trees, but had roots into the ground and they had a kind of like a potato plant in it. And the Viet Cong had dug themselves in, and so the Marines uh, devised a strategy to root the Viet Cong out. They torched the field and filled it with gunfire, uh, and then went and policed for dead bodies and uh, survivors. Then the convoy proceeded onwards. As they moved into the waterway, uh, you can see here uh, where Leon's on the fifth vehicle in this convoy. Uh, a few moments had passed after the entire convoy was in the waterway, moving upstream, and they were attacked from the right side, the right flank. The gunfire erupted. Uh, now, Leon was positioned just to the side, uh, the left side of this 30 caliber cannon or a 30 millimeter cannon, and was pushed down. The Marines on the right side of the vessel who weren't immediately killed uh, in this ambush ran over the top and they stepped on him, pushing him down between the plating, sandbags, uh, this cannon at a head headlamp, which absorbed the gunfire. He kept Leon from being killed. The gunner on this 30 died immediately. The hatch behind Leon opens up and an arm comes out, it holds a canister of ammunition, and it shakes as if to say, is anybody here? Is anybody there? Now, Leon, in his early 20s, is 21 at this point, and he's terrified. I'm 29, and I would be terrified of this. Gunfire is racketing off the side of this vehicle. Men are dying, men are screaming. It's all along all 13 vehicles. And Leon has to make a decision. Either I fight or I die. And he decides to fight. Slaps down the hatch, pulls back the charging rod, unhooks it to the right, and starts pulling down on the firing mechanism. And he fired this weapon until it ran dry. Now, at the end of this, no noise came from the beach. Nothing came from the beach. No fire, no screaming wounded, 
no howling dead, nothing. From extreme sound, extremely loud and cacophony of noise and violence to nothing. Now Leon says, I never felt more powerful than this moment and I have never felt as powerful since this moment. Every man on this vessel, every man in this convoy had Leon to thank for laying down that fire. Everyone who was still alive owes him their life. Now you can see Leon. He's one hard son of a gun. He took charge. He appraised his situation. Unlike any Marine, he fought tooth and nail. He fought until he ran out of bullets. But the Marine behind him is a different story. He watched his buddies die. The look on his face tells me, I want to go home. I don't want to be here anymore. What the hell am I doing? And so you can see two very different emotions. Two men sitting side by side who just went through the same experience. And one man feels incredibly powerful. Like a god. And the man next to him feels incredibly small. And scared. And just wants to go home. And that's what Vietnam was. More guys who just wanted to go home than anything else. All right, let's jump into some movies. Coming out this weekend, uh, kicking off uh, for your next two weeks of fun at the movies, fun, um, is a remake with photorealism that happens to be Lion Hamlet. Uh, expect no nothing, nothing from the original source material of Hamlet. But of course, uh, you know, not everybody dies at the end of this movie. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, welcome to your continued nightmare of watching yet another cash grab Disney movie that updates the original script with something that cleans up a perfect animated feature with the soulless eyes of an apex predator. Want to see the terrible lion movie? Watch Roar. They use real lions and the actors and crews deal with major scratch marks over the course of those films that took over... 15, 20 years to actually even release for wide release, and it's ridiculous if you get a chance to see it. Of course, we in the end, we can expect the same old cash grab you know and love. This is what you get for uh, liking Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Jungle Book. So, moving on to the next thing is, uh, of course, in part with the long double special episode, we're we'll be talking about movies that are coming out not just today, but also in the future. One example of the future is... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, or as I like to call it, Quentin Tarantino's Boogie Nights, but with Charles Manson. And I'm assuming it's, uh, he, he waited for Charles Manson to die and after a, a certain amount of time in jail and whatnot. So this movie follows an actor and stuntman who happens to get involved with a cult leader indirectly, which seems to be kind of the uh, staple of Quentin Tarantino films, where it's just like, he's like, oh, I know this famous person, but only indirectly because of this one person who happens to be hanging out with this person. So happenstance tends to make a big push in uh, Quentin Tarantino films where they just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, so it's basically like Coen Brothers mixed with bad language um, in this film. Anyways, he usually makes good films, uh, but of course, uh, if you consider Jackie Brown his worst film. Up next, we got a documentary, Sell Out, with the documentary about fish as we dive into the creative process of a ska band, much like an improv group, but this improv group is famous. Anyways, we dive into the life of fish frontman Trey Antasio, who plays fish while making music and such. Meaning musicians never really retire. They kind of hide behind music productions and movies, films, video games, and whatnot. Sometimes it's nice to branch out and watch a documentary, right? All right, so I got a couple quickens for you guys. The next ones we have is David Crosby. Remember my name? No, thank you. I will not remember since I think of Bing Crosby. Uh, then we got uh, Into Ashes uh, from the picture that I can only assume is the uh, main character goes into routine exposition followed by almost dying and rises from the ashes only to kick some booty. Oh, wait, this is not it. But, oh well, you don't need the poster. All right, mo <laughs> moving on. At War, a movie about a person at war fighting and stuff. It's a foreign film, 
uh, and you get your uh, Google Translate or learn the language like me because I'm culture appropriate. Um, also, uh, there's no bullets. I just double checked the uh, <laughs> the uh, um, synopsis. Apparently, at war has everything to do with uh, a company uh, screwing over the uh, c uh, the employees, but not uh, honoring the pension plan. So I don't know. It's it's very it's it's very like mis misleading. It's extremely misleading. Uh, and finally, uh, it's about a single mother uh, just trying to get by with her kid while fighting the landlord to not get evicted. Sad, true, and happens all the time. Watch watch a movie that reminds us we're one foot away from being homeless. Oof, that got really dark. But anyways, that's pretty much it for your. Uh, in the background, there was the ambulance. That this is the usually pathway they usually drive through here. Anyways, that pretty much does it for uh, all the movies that are gonna be coming up for the next two weeks. There's not much going on here because a lot of them um, are batting down d down the hatch for the Lion King movie, which most people won't want to see. And then um, a lot of adults will probably go see the Quentin Tarantino film while they send their kids to go see Lion King, and they're just like blah 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 blah. Anyways, we got uh, some. New programs going to be airing on MCAT, and when I come back, I'm going to be talking about the wonderful, wonderful world of City Council. That has implications for public safety and legal because uh, it's created a what attorneys call an attractive nuisance. You can see this young man here. I put an arrow to show him. I stood and watched him as he climbed to the top here and did a bag flip off of the very top of that hoping, I guess, that he was going to land in a deep part of the river. But this is something that you see every summer out on the bridge. And uh, the concern is that it's a legal liability for the county because the definition under law is to maintain an artificial structure condition which poses a known risk of death or injury constitutes an attractive nuisance. And this has already happened to Missoula County at East Missoula. This is a piece uh, by entitled Tree Circus. It was created in 2017 by Patrick Doherty of the United States. It's a structure that's uh, peppered evenly with tall ponderosa pines and uh, he created uh, this in a circular design to create a recognizable focal point against the backdrop. Some of the sculptures that are here is uh, you're really invited to walk in, into the sculptures, through the sculptures, and experience the sculptures. So <clears throat> you're walking into the environments. It's just wonderful. was four months pregnant and um and so I stepped to the side and I just started writing the entire scene and I didn't know what was going on I just stood there and I wrote it I wrote it pretty descriptively actually but I didn't know like when you do those sorts of things you don't know what's actually going to happen with with um with that writing it just went into a notebook but that ended up being the opening part of storming the wall um <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council. They annexed a new uh, section over by Airport Boulevard, and now they're rezoning it, which means they're allowing some mixed commercial residential areas in this particular area. And we're going to have one of the uh, folks from uh, Developmental Services, um, 
Andrew Bogman, uh, Bowman, sorry, Andrew Bowman is talking about uh, some of these new properties in this area. The growth policy recommends a land use designation of regional commercial and services. Areas designated regional commercial and services have commercial and residential uses and are mixed with more intense commercial uses and allows a high density residential uh, up to 43 dwelling units per acre and in integrated travel corridors. All right, so basically, as you can see from this thing, the light industrial, this is considered where the uh, train tracks are. Um, uh, this area right here is the commercial stuff, uh, and this is basically west of Reserve Street. And this little area right here it was the original plan for uh, the new Costco back in the day, but it didn't happen. Um, but right now, they're rezoning it, and they're going to be basi basically making a throughway much like Flynn Lane, for some of you who are around f and from Missoula, Flynn Lane is an, a good, as a solid access point. A lot of people have been using to get to Broadway and, of course, highway uh, that highway access point as you're going to Kalispell. Um, now they're trying to improve it so they have Mary Street to do so as well. Moving forward on that. Um, this means the city will uh, make a road through Mary Lane to help the flow of traffic off Reserve and Flynn Lane to Broadway, west of Reserve, towards the airport. Uh, Jeff Smith, WMG Group, plans to make a carpet store on this particular partial of land. Um, housing solutions. Um, well, never mind. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead to the next thing. But this is kind of like the thing that's happening on that side. I just want to get a little t uh, tidbit of kind of what's going on in that particular area. City annexed a lot of that places, especially with the um, housing development that's up there near, near Expressway. It's it's far reaching and the intention was that place was always going to be annexed by the city from the very start of the construction of those houses. So that's uh, kind of going through the plans and just kind of going through everything and the rezoning and just kind of changing things up from what the county had originally planned for that area. All right, moving on. This next thing is happening on 9th Street. Uh, it's kind of nestled away uh, uh, up um, near Franklin to the Fort. Housing Solution LLC is de developing a different affordable senior housing project that than the one proposed in 2018. This project is also called Skyview. So the, the magic word for this one is Skyview and is proposed 39 units of affordable new construction rental property for seniors located at 2400 9th Street West in Missoula's Franklin to the Fort neighborhood. So before we get into the public comments, we also we have uh, somebody from this group uh, representing it, and this is uh, Mr. Uh, Burke Calter, and he is talking a little bit more about this in detail about what you guys can expect from this uh, affordable Skyview uh, apartment complex, basically. I've heard some rumblings of a sentiment that there was uh, collusion or a secret agenda related to the subdivision of this property and now these proposed apartments on the Ninth, on, at Ninth Street. And I'd like to clearly state that is not the case. Um, so to get started, I'll give you a brief history of our efforts uh, to bring affordable rental housing to Missoula. Um, a timeline, how we got to now. After being unsuccessful with the Montana Board of Housing in November of last year, we immediately went to work trying to preserve uh, last year's site and plans. And when that option expired, uh, we started scouring the town for alternative locations. As I've said, we searched from Lolo to Butler Creek to Bonner and all points in between. Earlier this year, I remember trying to decipher the cost of removing a buried garbage that had been placed on a site in Missoula several years ago. I share this only as an example to the lengths we've gone to try and find a suitable site. All right, so when they finally found the site, they found it into the Franklin to the Fort. Um, the city's been working with them as well. And of course, um, let's see, Mr. Uh, Burkhalter goes into detail, details, and of course, from the timeline where they are now since they are going against eight other proposals this October, whether this project would even move forward, is for the funding and whatnot. Um, and of course, they uh, wrote this in conjunction with a place called Home, which is a uh, part of our Missoula, the housing um, process that Missoula um, approved of just a couple weeks ago. Sky uh, the, the plan, Skyview plans to work with this plan to help meet the needs of affordable housing, while at the same time, the constant growing population that is Missou Missoula. Mr. Uh, Burkhalter talks about the uh, misconceptions of this uh, certain uh, senior, oh wait, wait, hold on. Let me just make sure I'm getting the right quote. Okay. 
So this is, uh, the, so Mr. Bo Burke Coulter talks about some of the misconceptions. I understand the concern. The term rental, apartments, and affordable housing brings all kinds of images to people's minds. Unfortunately, oftentimes they are very negative things. We tried and will continue to try to put their minds at ease. An affordable senior property, while more dense than single family homes, wants the same things they do, peaceful and quiet neighborhoods with friendly neighbors. An affordable senior property is much different than a conventional building, and here's just a couple of ways why. One, there'll be a manager on property, making sure the social calendar is full, the property is kept up, and there's a quiet and peaceful enjoyment for all the residents and neighbors. A large community room for regular activities and relationships amongst the residents. Long-term residents. Oftentimes, our residents are coming from a home they can no longer physically keep up. And when they move in with us, they stay until they can make, as my mom, who was a hospice nurse, used to say, a celestial exit. Or All right, so just a, a little bit of background. Uh, it's a... Uh he went into talking about quiet, peaceful areas with single aging folks and be able to accommodate aging couples as well. Um, Malcolm Lowe uh, from Franklin to the Fort is concerned about parking and beyond because this particular area is in a fairly already established neighborhood. He kind of goes into more detail about it. 39 units on one acre would be an ugly, glaring contrast to what, and would be an insult to the family homes identified as an asset to his project. We have been informed that neighborhood character is a consideration usually dismissed in a rezoning hearing. Well, then let's talk about infrastructure. A walkable neighborhood, he says. We have no sidewalks. We have no street lighting. While the parking proposed for the Skyview project is one per unit, we all know it will exceed that with additional vehicles, trailers, and so on. These will be parked on our streets, so effectively our streets will become narrower. And where will these pedestrians have to walk? In the street. Streets which are projected to carry an additional 300 cars a day. And to that, add the fact that our streets get plowed maybe twice a winter, and you have an icy, dangerous reality for the residents, not the rosy picture painted in the developer's proposal. But if one of our residents is injured on that street, will, will he be sued? Will Alex be sued? Or will the city? We who live on these streets are telling you now that this will create an unsafe situation. All right. So among, um, let's see, among uh, Mr. Lowe's, um, he went on to talk about liabilities such as high-density areas with limited parking and many bumpy streets. There are, uh, there is a, um, duh, 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 duh. sorry, I, I have to. And also, there's a lot of undeveloped areas. Like, there's there's not many sidewalks in the area. Uh, there's no street lights. It's pretty pitch dark in that particular area. And uh, of course, I live in the Franklin to the Ford area. A lot of um, points is that when I'm driving through there, it's really dark. There's a lot of darkness just in that particular area. And uh, with the street lights, if you put in street lights, it's just going to cause a nuisance with lighting for people in those areas. So it's very interesting how they're going to go about doing this. One example, uh, Donna Ferguson doesn't like this multi-story building near residential neighborhoods. And this is uh, her explaining a little more about that. It is a s all level single family dwellings. Now you want to put three levels so they can look down in our yards and on us and we have no privacy. You're waging an assault on our neighborhood. Previously, when it was zoned for duplexes, you didn't get too much flack. Now I've heard it's 36 tonight. Before that, it was 39, and one time in print, I saw it was 40. What will it be when this finally is concluded? There will be traffic. And I'm telling you, nobody wants to go near reserve because that has turned into one holy nightmare. All right, so that is uh, one of the many comments that are uh, being echoed throughout the meeting as well. Susan Kohler, uh, uh, the executive director of Missoula Agent Services, is in support of this project because she believes that change happens regardless. I bought a home in, in the mid-80s with State Board of Housing at 13% interest. And... Um, Above me was nothing. There was no Chief Charlotte School, nothing. Across Moose Can Gully, nothing. Open. I loved it. I could hear uh, coyotes. It was open space. As you all know, the hillsides are all filled with housing. I don't regret it. I didn't like the change. 
but it's a reality that we can't keep our community for the way it was when we first got here, and we have to work with the, the needs that are there. And I just really encourage um, all the people of the, res of the neighborhood to embrace this project and work with Alex and their group about making it as, as amenable as possible because we really need this housing. Thank you. All right, so uh, Susan Kohler, along with many of the uh, uh, folks on City Council, are working with a place called Home, which is really trying to fill in some of the uh, cracks within the city of Missoula to help build up with, yes, gentrification is one of the things. And a lot of the things is in terms of this quote from John German, who lives on 9th Street, saying that there's a lot of outsiders trying to influence people who live in Franklin to the Fort. And this is what he had to say. The people that support this project do not live in our neighborhood. Now you can take Franklin to the Fort, knock the whole damn place down, and fill the whole place with complexes, which I suppose is the ultimate idea. But you're never going to get rid of the homeless. That problem's going to go on for years and years. And I'll tell you what, we will, we will gauge the success of our 10-year plan to end homelessness by the number of homeless flooding into this valley to take, take advantage of our 10-year plan to end homelessness. It's not going to stop. You've got to come up with a better plan than this. It's an awful lot of crying and whining and talking to save 36 people? Give me a break. All right, so that was uh, some of the um, uh, quotes and some of the issues as well. And then, of course, a big chunk of the meeting had to do with uh, uh, the city council commenting on this as well. Gwen Jones talks about working with the Missoula Asian Services and helping the elderly uh, find uh, affordable but also a safe place for them to uh, grow old. This project would accomplish helping that issue. Um, as I sit on the Missoula Aging Services Board as a city council liaison. And once a year, I get to go deliver Meals on Wheels because I'm a community leader. And in neighborhoods across Missoula, we have seniors living in horrific situations. And that's putting it nicely. There are some miserable, miserable places out there that we have seniors living in. We do not have any tools granted to us by the legislature to inspect those places and make sure they're safe. And we have some seniors who are living in great situations, which is good, but we have many who are not. All right, so that's Gwen Jones reflecting on that as well. And then we have uh, Jesse Ramos, who is also in support of this project, while at the same time reflecting on a lot of the concerns of a lot of the people. On one side, there's, there's what some folks would call the, the NIMBY side, where people don't want to see any change in their backyard, um, where they have private property rights, and, and then they establish their homes there. And they don't want to see don't want to see any change. And then there's the other side of it, um, the the Yimby side. I hadn't heard that term before tonight. Um, the, the anyone in my backyard um, scenario where. I think that argument um, is rooted in a good principle where, where private property rights um, can, kind of rule all in the sense that if you don't want a development going in next to you, then you should buy the development, but that is not how the real world works. Um, there's so many different things, and I think one thing that everybody's kind of struggling with here is maybe the changing of the rules, I, and this isn't the fault of this city council by any stretch. These rules have been in place for decades, but and there's no way to foresee the future, but I think that if a lot of these folks had known this development was going to come in, maybe they would have purchased a home somewhere else, or maybe there would have been a consorted effort by the neighborhood to purchase this parcel to keep it as open space. All right, so uh, many of the uh, going back and forth, and it's uh, an ongoing issue, and this isn't the only time this has happened. Um, that There was a huge issue with the Orchard Homes a couple months ago with the uh, development of the townhouses in that particular area. A lot of people were worried about the property values starting to uh, go down because of these properties, and that's just one of the things that uh, the city of Missoula is really trying to figure out because most cities are um, basically uh, Frankensteins if you really think about it because zoning changes, policy changes, some houses are like huge and like Victorian era, the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't know, Victorian, that's a little long time ago, especially for Montana. But regardless, like old timey buildings right there is like, oh, it's a historic landmark. You can't tear it down. It's like, okay. Then they build around it and then you have modern housing and uh, affordable housing all around it apartment complexes, all sorts of things. And then it just basically becomes a, 
so many different things happening in the city of Missoula as well, trying to the city of Missoula, which is trying to fill in these gaps. And one of the gaps happened to be the uh, Ninth Street uh, in the Franklin to the Fort neighborhood. There's a lot of houses in that neighborhood. There's a lot of uh, areas in this particular uh, thing as well. But it, it th something I do want people to think about uh, is um, uh, a lot of times uh, there's lots to think about. But these kinds of th meetings will happen in the future as Missoula adjusts to an ever-growing population. Regardless, Missoula is growing. A lot of people don't want it to grow, but it's going to grow, and people need places to live. Uh, regardless, uh, if this is a, a needs assessment or if this is uh, based on being annoyed. Okay, so I want to get a little further into this more than I have to. Let me look at my old uh, videos as well. I have a, a nice highlight video from our dude I just drew. So uh, we did a dude I just uh, drew junior uh, highlights episode three, uh, and you can find this on the YouTube channel um, dude I just drew. And without further ado, here is dude I just drew. And when I come back, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about uh, this and that, maybe a couple art projects and whatnot. So without further ado, here is the premiere of dude I just drew junior highlights number three. It's so long title. Hey everybody, welcome to a, another episode of Dude I Just Drew Jr. And uh, today we've got our first person to draw, well, other than me, is uh, Avalon. 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 Yes. Um, <laughs> and we have a bunch of, we have, we have a great, great amount of people here getting ready to, getting ready, hopefully ready to draw. Nice, yeah. Um, so here are the rules. So you guys get five minutes to draw a suggestion that the crowd here, our audience, makes. A uh, suggestion you draw it. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's get to it then. Let's get right to it. I'll, 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 I'll start drawing first. Let's see. Let's hear the suggestion. One and an infinity gauntlet. <laughs> One with an infinity gauntlet. <laughs> So, like, zero, make Thanos holding a co coffee. The squirrels are plotting our downfall. Squirrels are plotting to steal all peanut butter. Exactly. Yeah, he's, he's at his ranch right now collecting yams because he ran out of infinity stones. Spiking yams, spiking yams. Yeah, those spiky yams. I almost said Viking yams. And then, those like, are, are those like sunglasses? Like you darken them and you just wear Thanos sunglasses? Wanted. Yeah, let's just put it as sunglasses. Like uh, there are some, there's like, there's like a bedazzle here. There's like a sparkle here. He has infinity pool. Water bottle. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is the part where you might think that you're, you know, whatever. The guy made of entirely of snacks. Yeah. Okay. Snack is going to be made out of a bag of chips. Awesomeness. <laughs> it's like a, a, a giant raisin, a giant stale raisin. What's the head? What's the, what kind of snack is no, that? That's a snack man. <laughs> what kind of head is the... What's the snack man song? Yeah, what is it? Snack man. I was thinking more like, I'm the snack man. Let's just do this already. It is! It's a Cthulhu! Uh, it's a Cthulhu. Dude, he's, uh, he's a squid head guy. It's, uh, Are you sure that's Cthulhu? <laughs> yeah, I'm drawing a Cthulhu snail! This is a Cthulhu. That's a Cthulhu, guys. It's one of Remember? the ancient gods. One of the ancient ones. Anything can, what looks like. anything can be interpreted. Do you think that's what Yogg's Well, I'm doing my James. best, guys. James You're talking God to the guy out. who only ever draws in class as doodles that are tiny. Do snails have arms? <laughs> Asking the real what questions. Snail elbow look like? Get out of here. Get here with that. And I like chicken nuggets. Because I've never uh, actually seen a Cthulhu snail, to be honest. I want to do the pop tart. Maturity straight out the window and have the pop tart putting them in the toaster. That's for a pop tart eating a person, not cooking them. Come on, Neil. I mean, <laughs> what, what are you <laughs> yeah, I know. Come yeah. on, Neil. Come. On. I mean, I wouldn't blame him. He has long hair, just like you. Yeah, you know. Am I Neil? 
Yes, you are. No, you're Scott. Am I Neil? <laughs> But I thought I was Neil. No, whoever is in the chair is Scott. Anyone else who has long hair is Neil. Oh, he looks so happy. He looks like a can of Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh no! I am scared. Oh! There's a bunch of... You did. You... <laughs> That's um. That's not how you spell yum. Yeah. Mario and Mad Max. Mash together. Okay. Uh, um, Mario in a uh, post-apocalyptic post world. I don't know what that is. Ah! Only me. Only me. It's me. Only me. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. Oh my gosh. Can't be. Another banana? It can't be another. It looks like a squash. It's kind of squash. No. Oh, you're red red like red red. Red. Are you trying to say something, Scott? Are you trying to say something, Scott? Yeah, yeah. A lot of that more effort in the banana. I don't know what to draw on him. Uh, ninja scarf. Oh, yeah. Ninja, ninja oh, yeah. scarf. Ninja scarf. Oh. That's a really skinny ninja. Are you sure it's not me? <laughs> <laughs> draw a delirious Jack. Yeah. Since he's right there, you can you have you have reference. Yeah, we have reference what right here. Draw a guy ball. Draw a guy ball. Okay, guy ball. Right, you draw a person, an eyeball, a uh, this. Is that how every artist starts? Oh! That's this will get us all killed one day. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to. Illuminati, it's been forever. How you doing? How's your mother? <laughs> You know, Jack, that's why, that's what happened. That's where the other eye went. Okay, Jack? Stop being hilarious. <laughs> Stop being hilarious. I am a genius, so leave me alone. Scott. Scott. Okay, 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 okay. Hey. Hey. I heard you the first time. All right. Okay, oh my goodness. Trash. What are you drawing, Ben? Super Scott. Alright. Nice, we got a trash can. Alright, and then, um... A trash okay. can? <laughs> I just realized that now. <laughs> is that Scott? Is that Scott? Scott, look at your... Whoa! Whoa! That's a big trash can. That's a really big trash can. There you go, and then... And then, uh... He looks like Scott. Scott. He's yeah. just standing there. What, are this you is, looking at me while you're drawing? It's a classic... Hey, yeah. Marshmallow? Marshmallow. Are you a cartoon? Bone marrow. <laughs> Tip. If you want to make good lines, usually a lot of artists will flip over the paper and make the lines so that it's better. Straighter, I don't know. I don't know. So, how... <laughs> drawing left to right is different than drawing left to down. Yeah. You just gotta figure out how to do that. Until you do, you just flip the paper around. The more you know. Yeah. The more you know. That's how you put the meme up there. I don't know. The more you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, where's that neck? How about that neck? Oh, we can't have that big of a neck. Got a cheese wheel. You know, what, you know what Billy Shakespeare always said? Bill, Billy Shakespeare. Shakespeare had his own. Um, uh, show, what would we call it? Get off my stage! <laughs> Shakespeare has issues. Man, Shakespeare has <laughs> Our last Check drawing, I get to sit field. down. Okay, I need a suggestion. A rock! A dog! Choose it. Choose it. Who chooses it? Okay. No, you? Do you choose something? You? Choose something. <laughs> no! <laughs> cheese wheel! That's a nice looking cheese wheel right there. I need to add the little holes. I need a circle. No way. This guy is resourceful. Oh, he's. 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 He's cheap. That's. <laughs> he's he's cheap. No templates allowed. No templates? Is that where cheeses come from? Yeah! <laughs> Look at all our, oh look at all these people's yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Look at all these kids' stuff. Your shirt's, uh, what's it? Uh, uh yet again, another great Peter, episode of Peter, Dude, Peter. I just drew, uh, Junior. Yeah, Dude, I just drew Junior. And, um, 
As always, go check us out on YouTube. Oh, yeah. uh, go check out our Patreon, our Spreadshirt, our. Uh, check out my Instagram at no more two nine 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 if you get the chance. Check out everything. I don't know. Uh, anyways, great art, great drawing. Uh, hope to catch you guys later. Bye. Anyways, uh, bye. See you guys later. Bye. Good episode. Good episode. You'll be seeing a lot of those kids tonight uh, at 5 p.m. Of course, if you're seeing this next Friday, uh, you won't be seeing any of those kids. Well, maybe one of them um, for the live show for our zombie camp next week. So uh, I did want to talk a little bit about our zombie camp. If you are interested in being uh, a zombie, um, we usually have a zombie day on Tuesday. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this in time. But just so you guys know, uh, MCAT, uh, hopefully we're going to have uh, most of our zombie uh, creature effects kind of day on a Tuesday, so we're trying to do some a bunch of cool little zombie horde scenes as whatnot. So, um, let's see, MCAT Zombie Camp, let me look that up on our YouTube. I couldn't look it up while the video was playing because I used Final Cut Pro to kind of show it. So, uh, oh well, here's the trailer. If you guys want to check this out, here is the trailer for our zombie camp from last year. Let me just start it off from the top. And without further ado, here is last year's 2018 Zombie Camp. Tonight, hopefully you guys will be able to see a nice uh, a new trailer uh, leading up to our Zombie Camp 2019. Brothers and sisters of Anu, I have gathered you here today to bring back the life that was regretfully taken from us due to the undead rising from the earth and stealing the life upon the land. Putting us in danger. We made it, and that's all that matters. Can't trust him. What do we do now? I was almost bit twice. chills going on in here so i'm really excited to see it uh last year was our first year where we just kind of made an anthology so a lot of kids can't came up with their own zombie segment within this zombie verse that we created through him cat because the kids is like this is happening in the same movie in the same universe like yeah sure whatever kid and that's basically kind of how the zombie universe kind of came about through the mcat uh, page and whatnot all right um <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, as much as I kind of wanted to kind of cover here and there, but I did want to, um, talk a little bit about some of the art that's happening at the Missoula, um, Art Museum. So, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of art before I wrap up my show. So, here is, uh, basically, a short diversion, but this is from the, let's see here. Let me actually make sure it's something that I know what it is. This is uh, basically the uh, hard edge soft ground access and the power in the MAM collection uh, for 2019. And this should be going on until September. So here's this. And when I come back, I'll finally end the show.
Oh yeah, I definitely like a lot of that art from that uh, from the Museum Art Museum. I did want to highlight one of them that I think is really really cool. So if you guys take a look at this. I think it's just really cool. I like how they repurpose some old recycled materials like the maps and you can kind of see this whole area and whatnot. I think it's just a beautiful uh, addition to the Missoula Art Museum. Uh, of course, most of the um, exhibits at the Missoula Art Museum will be wrapped up, uh, are usually wrapped up. They usually don't have any kind of permanent collection there. It's all a rotating collection of art, which I think is really awesome because I've been to a couple art museums throughout uh, different uh, communities and different towns and different big cities, metropolitan areas, the kind of deals. And they have a kind of a, a, a solid exhibit that's just like, oh, this is like uh, br uh, English uh, art from the 1700s. Have fun. And they're just there for forever. And there's not much of a change. But Missouri Museum is a good opportunity. It's free admission, free expression. They have a bunch of classes there as well. If you guys are planning on going out and about, uh, it's nothing but great art and great stuff. The former curator at the Missouri Museum also works uh, here with me on a program called Look Before You Speak. I highly suggest you guys check out those episodes. We've been going to a couple uh, places here and there. Our more recent episode is we went over to Lolo. Uh, I think more of a, the Steve, um, more Steve Stevensville area to talk to uh, uh, an artist who is transgender. So check that out, and you can find that online at MCAT.org. All right. All right, no more drumming. It's time for some um, th something that rhymes with drumming. That also means it's the end of the show. So for <laughs> Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Um, have a wonderful day. And, of course, uh, if you're watching this next Friday, you guys get a nice representation of all the videos and all the stuff that the kids have been doing all this summer long. And enjoy some uh, zombie uh, stuff happening um, for our zombie uh, big film that's happening tonight as well um, if you're watching this next Friday. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.